Good evening, Entropians. Julian McBain here, and we are back in Mayhem. Now, uh, if you saw my vlog yesterday, you'll know that we were doing Mayhem then. We are doing Mayhem now. Um, as usual, if I'm doing Mayhem, I'm straight out doing Mayhem. I don't care if it's a regular Entropia video or a vlog, because I love doing Mayhem. Uh, before we get started, let's let's kind of do a breakdown of how I'm hunting. So, of course, my primary weapon are my wep are my swords. I'm using an LB or an LR10 to pull. And it's a little bit further down than it should be. I kind of forgot to switch once in a while. Distractions happen. Distractions happen. I'm also using the LB25 with my um, melee trauma amplifier one as well. And so, at some point, I'm going to have to upgrade that trauma amplifier. But I'm not entirely sure I have. Well, first off, they're extremely expensive, but on top of that, it's also, do, does the sword have the capability to handle? Because it goes from one to like six. No one's selling twos or threes or fours. And with, on the rare occasion they are, they're always limited, which is a pain in the ass. So I'm sitting down with the scotch. I got my leprechaun deployed. Let's hunt some mobs. Oh, and I forgot my pill. Sometimes life is sad, but the purple pill makes it all better. Ooh. That line was scragged from Pillsy, who is a character in the Foamy the Squirrel series. Go check that out. It's by, I think his name is John Ian Mathers. Let me check that. Uh, it's So the name of the series is Neurotically Yours. The name of the publisher is Ill Will Press. And it was created by John Ian Mathers as kind of a commentary on humans in general, although there are a bunch of other things. I haven't watched it in probably seven or eight years, and I think he rebooted everything, but it was entertaining back when I watched it, so that was one of my favorite lines. But no, I like to use the, um, I mean, I'm, I'm swimming in skill-up pills because I keep forgetting to take the damn things. I've got 64 of them, so, you know, the neurobiotic boosters are just amazing to have. And I've apparently got four of these Easter Strong Boxes now. I haven't decided whether I'm going to open them or sell them. They usually average between four and six pet a piece. That's a really good way to offset the expensive armor. But at the same time, there is that chance at a ring. And even if you don't get it, it's all ammo, which of course I'm going to end up cycling. So I haven't decided what to do about that yet. And it occurs to me, I know there's a lot of YouTubers that do like box opening videos where they'll open a hundred boxes. I'm not going to do that. Well, let's just see how, how far Easter mayhem takes us. And we'll make an informed decision when the time comes. Come on, buddy. I have come to... I have pretty much fallen in love with doing Mayhem. And I don't know if it's because it's the... And I think I talked about this a little bit yesterday when I did tomorrow's vlog post. It's Friday. Uh, this, of course, will come out on Sunday. But... Um, I just love the ability to just focus hunt. No competition, no worrying about accidentally shooting someone else's loot, because you're the only one there. God, I love this experience. I got hooked on. My narc knows how to make an experience you get hooked on. It's just incredible. They do a bang up job of it. Oh, got open window. It's finally starting to look a little bit like spring here in Vermont. The mud's deep enough. Um, but anyway, Mindark does a fantastic job with the way they design these mayhem events. Um, I've only really done the timed events if if I have the ability to. Unlike the last time where I was not suited to, or not capable of keeping up with the survival event, which was Halloween mayhem. It looks like I should be able to manage something in this one, so I might do the level two survivor and put that on a video too, as long as I can finish this before um, before the actual event is over. 
unfortunately I'm not in the position at this point where I can like stream all of Mayhem or record all of Mayhem and just throw it out there. Which honestly is kind of a shame because I know there's a market for it. I know there are people who like to watch that and I mean I'm one of the people who like to watch that. Hell, I spent a good chunk of yesterday watching Lore Spade do his. Uh, first two hours I think. And I had a blast. I love watching, you know, just the chit chat and the conversation. And I, I honestly wish I was in a position where I could live stream sometimes because I think that would be a lot of fun. But I'm, I'm not currently in that position. Um, so instead, I'll just I'll record what I can. And there are going to be gaps because after I record, I often go back and I play a little bit more. I don't think I... Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. The amount of shrap that you get from these events, just you can't compare it. And if you're doing well, which I'm... Relatively speaking, compared to other players of my level, I'm probably not doing very well because I did not level my reclaiming. So that's one of the primary reasons I'm here. When I started Mayhem, my reclaiming was under 500. And I am two and a half hours into a 10 hour uh, marathon combat streak. So that just tells you that's that's my primary reason for doing it. Like, I was actually thinking about skipping this mayhem, and then I found out it was bots, and I'm like, oh, do I really want to skip that? And then I'm like, oh, all the reclaiming points I could get, I could just pill up and, you know, put the, the skill boost pill. Take a skill boost pill and just go to town on it. It just occurred to me that anyone listening to this who doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about is going to think I'm on drugs. I'm not on drugs. Well, I'm drinking, but that's a little different. Um, but yeah, I, I figured it's a great way to, to level a skill that I have... I have severely neglected, although I have been spending time in Orthos trying to level it. <clears throat> that's not... It's a good place to level it, but it's not a good place to level it. Because you know that, that gap that we run into as players? It's between it's between when you max out like the, the Solomate Nixo or Buchan Spare Rifle here on Calypso, and when you can start using our Matrix weapons. Or between where you, you max out the TT weapon and you can start using our matrix weapons. That gap. That's where my loot was for robots. If I went out and killed robots at my level, I'd be losing pet hand over fist. And it's not worth it. It just wasn't. So I'd go out to Orthos and I'd just hunt bots out there. And I've got like 20 Solomate Rubios that I can sell. Which I need to go back and do so before I go to Cyrene. Um, someone told me, who was it? Was it Faya? Who told me about the, like, the badges or whatever? I think it was Vaya Gaming. Yeah. Apparently you can collect, like, 200 badges to unlock a terminal there. And now I'm really curious because I have no clue what you were what he was talking about. But that sounds like a challenge for videos. And I you all know how much I love doing missions on video. Kind of the walkthrough thing like I do with uh, one player. So I'm gonna start searching that out and figure out what that all means and see what kind of rewards it gives. Because I think Cyrene is a planet that is not given nearly the love it deserves. There's a lot there for a small planet, and it's way underpopulated, and the loot table is really good. So, I figure there's there's a nice daily when you hunt where you hunt bots, or there's a, a challenge where you hunt bots. And they're like level seven, level eight. I think that now that I have um, vigilante armor, I'll be better suited to fight them. 
because I think that they're whatever type of damage they do ghost really isn't all that much proof against it there's a couple things on sirene that are like that the um the mo the merfolken are like that ghost armor is not really good proof against their attacks i'm hoping vigilante is and i'm hoping to find equivalent armors for ghost and vigilante on sirene because I prefer the look of, like, the Torellian armor. I love the look of the Torellian armor, and I can't ever wear the damn stuff, because the stuff I would normally wear the armor for, my evade's high enough that I could just evade them. And I've managed to grind my dodge up just enough to where, like, the, the robots down there aren't a big deal. I need to... I might have to spend some time around Icarus hunting uh, bristle hogs because they're... They do ranged attacks, so you use your dodge skill and not your evade skill. But apparently, whatever their attack is, it's a much higher accuracy than the robots are. Because I've noticed that they hit me a lot more frequently. Now, it might be because I think your evade and dodge skills take a penalty when you're sweating. And that's what I primarily do with them, because I like to sweat them. Mostly because I can do two things at once, grind the dodge and sweat the mob. You get the bottles. The problem is is that their, their attacks hit like a truck, comparatively speaking, because they're level 1. And I know that the, the danger level of a mob is not necessarily commensurate with what our levels are. Like, these are level 10. I'm level 30-some-odd in my highest profession. What is it? 32? But if I take the level 14s in, a, in this Annihilation event, they they like they hit you like a hammer. And part of that's armor. I don't have any plates, which is my fault. It is. But I didn't feel like going through that many that much ammo and healing. When I go to do the defense, um, the defense mayhem. I don't know if you can do Annihilation and Defense at the same time, and I don't want to accidentally override my mayhem, my uh, Annihilation Mayhem by doing a Defense Mayhem. That would be bad. So, uh, we're going to find out. Speaking of which, we're two and a half hours in, and I don't know what the comparables are. We've got seven hours and 17 minutes left in this competition in this contest and we only have 455 points so i'm hoping i'm somewhere near placement i doubt it but it'd be cool are you kidding if i managed to place in 10th i probably would be doing cartwheels and i can't do cartwheels and this is only Category 2, and I know this is the last time I'm going to qualify for Category 2 because of my health. I think I'm... Am I already... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at 127 hit points. See, that's me not paying attention. I could have been sorting him instead of shooting. Sorting him? Oi. I'm a swordsman, and I just said sorting him. Ah... Could have been cutting him instead of shooting him. Yay, we teared up to Oh Global! 82.3 ped. That is awesome. For those of you playing the home game, that is eight dollars and twenty-three cents USD. Uh no, don't tar. Target the guy hitting you. Oh gosh, that's beautiful. I wonder if I should set like a, a cap for the amount of conversion ammo to offset the amount of repairs you have to do on these events. Like, I try to keep maintain a balance of 4 million ammo. So maybe if I set that as the cap, convert what I need to, and then dump the rest in the T. I hate TTing shrapnel because of the 1% um upwards conversion but at the same time there's not a, a good way to recompensate for your recompense for your um your armor repairs
Oh, that was really nice. I'm already above 4 million. I don't even remember what I started at. I have to say, this mayhem's been really good to me. It's like my third or fourth global in this mayhem run. Um, although, I didn't do too badly against, what was it, Merry May Yeah, Merry Mayhem, where you had the Dykebas. Um, But I only had one global, I think, and the one Hoff, which I really wish I had gotten on video, because that would have been awesome. But that, that was a nice global. That was a really nice global. Maybe we can go for two in one video. I know I'm getting greedy here, but you know what? A man can dream, you know what I mean? The other thing I love about Mayhem, it's really easy to time videos, because I try to keep my videos to around a half hour. And we have this beautiful clock in the upper right hand corner. <laughs> that tells me how long I've been recording. You know what? Let's. There we go. Let's get some of them, uh. Uh, mind force skills. Ah. That's something I really need to focus a little more on with my mind force. I mean, my healing's in great shape. Let's see, my I'm on chip five. Yeah, I'm using a level five healing chip, regen chip, and I've almost got it maxed out. I'm almost ready for level six. But as for the kinetic attack, I don't think I'm there yet. Now, these guys are too high a level to be leveling that on. But when I go to Cyrene, there's going to be some low-level stuff I'm going to have to work on, like um, dusters. I don't know if I'm in a position to be able to fight dusters effectively yet. That's something I need to test. But they jump from, like, level 3 to level 20. It's kind of an, an absurd jump. Which, I get it, they're supposed to be higher level, they include the lower level so you can grind out that, um, perception daily at the lower levels, but it's a hard grind, which, okay, fine, fair enough, it should be. Even though it's only 50 peck worth of perception, perception's a good skill to have. But, on the same token, it's one of those... At my level, when you're used to progressing at a certain rate... And you're not because you're, you're you're having to cut back on your skills. Not cut back on your skills. You're having to... Oh, what's the term I'm looking for? They use a particular term in Final Fantasy that actually works really well. Um, it basically means you reduce your abilities to the maximum for that skill set. Which makes a lot of sense from a balance standpoint. But there are days it's just annoying. <laughs> and I admit that fully. From a balance standpoint, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense from a balance standpoint. But there are days it's just annoying. Here I'm just launching Kamehameha's at this robot. <laughs> Oh god, I'm gonna get sued for all these references. Yes, I watched Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid. Everyone did. All of us weebs. And you know what? We all made the same joke where it took five episodes to pull off. Actually, it was Kame, episode, 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 Kame, episode, episode. Six episodes. Six episodes to pull off a Kamehameha wave on any given time. Interestingly, Kamehameha was the name of the last, was he the last king of Hawaii? It was a line of kings of Hawaii, back when Hawaii was a kingdom. 
Uh, I believe the Hawaiian royal family is still around. I know that one of their princes served in the U.S. Senate at one point, interestingly enough. But I don't know. I don't know where where that genetic line is right now. Um, I mean, of course, in the United States, we don't rec recognize royal lines, but at the same time, I think there's a certain amount of an exception made for Hawaii. They became a state, a constituent state of the United States. They were originally a kingdom. In the U.S., in order to become a state, you have to adopt a democratic, you have to adopt a constitution that's very similar to the federal, to the U.S. federal constitution. Um, interestingly, modeled off of the Iroquois Confederacy, uh, which is mostly New York, of all places. Um, but even the two republics that became constituent states of the United States had similar constitutions to begin with. Those republics become being Vermont and Texas by age, respectively. And then we have the One Kingdom of Hawaii that became a constituent state within our federated government. Um, and then we have a bunch of territories, which I think are all basically republics as well, um, with varying levels of matching to our constitutional um, setup here in the U.S. But I don't know what made them decide. I mean, it's, it's Japan, so where they pulled the idea out of is... I have no clue. But it just works, and it works well. Although that would that would actually really explain Master Roshi a lot, because he's always in a friggin' Hawaiian shirt. Thank God he never wore a grass skirt throughout the Dragon Ball series. <laughs> Yeah, we are doing good. Let's see if we can gather some more points in the next eight minutes or so. Great opportunity to grind skills that I normally don't. But at the same time, because it's a competition, like... There's a part of me that wants to do this twice. Once for the competition and once just to grind skills out. Because they only take your highest score, if I remember correctly. But there's that competitive person in me. You know, the one that actually hits my friends with swords every weekend. Well, most weekends. Oh, what was that? Was that, was that a level up? Three hundred. Uh oh, I bought some more uh, mon or um, moon deeds. Cryogenic hit. Level ten in the whipper p profession. Whipper. Okay. Apparently we have a society app. I'm gonna take care of that real quick. We're wasting time. Don't care. Okay. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I wanted to round out my moon deeds to an even number. Just makes tracking things easy. I'm not, I'm not as heavily invested in deeds as like Serial Overdrive or Lore Spade. Definitely not as heavily invested as Lore Spade. But at the same time, I do have enough to make a dent in my, um, my depot. You know, I haven't been paying attention. I really need to watch to see if I'm where I need to be with my freaking Mind Force chips. See, we're 94% with the LB25, which is where I want to be. We're losing a touch in efficiency, but we're gaining it back in skill gain. And as you all know, there is a fixed level of ped decay in this game. And I honestly think that fixed, that fixed decay is zero. Because Mindark themselves say, 
Oh, good. We've already maxed this one out. I can move on to the three. Maybe I'll do that once I exit. Mind Arc themselves say, you know, hey guys, Mind Arc makes their money off the repair terminal. That's how they pay their people. Money dumped into the repair terminal is removed from the game. And that's how they pay their software designers. And of course, you've got the fees for de for depositing and withdrawing funds. But even that is that's that's piecemeal compared to the amount of ped that people dump into repairs on a daily basis. And it makes a certain amount of sense. I mean, I'm pretty sure their team. I know their team is not tiny, but relatively speaking, I think it's like 12 developers. You know, give or take like five to handle the other, the liaison with the other planet partners. Because I'm sure there's someone who, who oversees the planet partners. Mindark is many things, but stupid is not one of them. So, I think there's a dozen people that, that run all of the, the operations of Mindark. Plus one or two like senior staff members that have to deal with um, the Swedish government and you know their legal counsel and all that other jazz. But, you know, when you've got a, a player base of approximately a million people and, you know, you put a million times, say, an average of... 40 ped a day per player in repairs and I'm averaging it out because you've got the newbies who are if they're repairing at all it's peck and you've got the ubers who might have 200 ped in repairs a day you know if you average 4 ped per player per day in repairs you have a million players that's 4 million bucks a day Now, of course, they pay Swedish taxes, which is, I think it's somewhere around the 65% mark in Swedish taxes. Um, that's still a reasonable salary for 12 developers after paying for, like, electricity. I don't know. I don't know how Sweden's tax code works, so I'm not going to get into that. And I'm, there's way too many political ramifications of that. And you know how I am about getting into politics on, on my vids. You want to see my politics? You can go to Twitter. You can find me. Follow me. Follow me on Twitter at Julian McBain. I'm easy to find. <laughs> Basically, I troll everybody in the political realm. Um. But, especially people from my state, oh my god. But, um, I'm not a troll to regular people on Twitter, just my politicians. Um, but, where was I? Shit. Lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, um, I don't know how they calculate their tax code in Sweden, but I know that they're, they have a fairly flat tax and it's like 60%. Um, but it's even with that, if, if every player spends an average of four pet a day, tiny amounts for newbies, larger amounts for Ubers, their coders are getting paid market value for their work. Oh, we have hit the 30 minute mark. And we are nowhere near the uh, escape point. No, no. No moving around and backing me back into your friend's asshole. No, 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 no. That's one thing about the new way that this works. Sometimes it, it, it like actively tries to kill you. <laughs> Run to the exit. Okay. We have paused. 
Considering I still have a ridiculous number of them, I'm not going to worry about the skills pill. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We're up to like 400 some odd points, although for whatever reason it won't let me see it when the progression is paused. Oh well. Um, our reclaiming started today at 544. It's now up to 559. I'll call that a win. And we had that one beautiful global. Beautiful global. 344 ammo, and we have like, what, 1.8 million in shrap. That just, that just like boggles me. I am gaining in shrap. I'm gaining ammo rather than losing. That never happens. So, okay, guys. I hope you're all doing mayhem, or at least I hope those that want to do mayhem are doing mayhem. If you don't like mayhem, don't do mayhem. You know, that's cool for you. That is your thing. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. Remember, we are trying for 100 subscribers before the end of April. I think I am up to 78. I will just confirm that real quick. Survey says I'm 70. Yeah, I'm up to 78. We need 22 subscribers to make it. And when this releases, it's going to be the 21st. That doesn't leave us a whole lot of time, guys. Come on, guys. 22 subscribers. It's not that hard. We can do this, right? All right, guys. I'll stop irritating you. You all have a wonderful night.